Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Saturday Brunch with your host, with the most, and you know I'm always and still till this day, till this day, shout out to Deontay Wilder, will always brag about having the best friend's toast, and that is still a call out to Hilda Bassi. Bro, do you know what I need to do? I need to actually send her a constructive email to come on the show because I feel like this is not coming across well. <laughs> so I think I need to reach out in a in a more conservative manner, as the kids will say. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my amazing show. Shout out to the House Chronicles for giving me this amazing platform to push my P and talk my shit. You know the vibes. Make sure you follow us on all social platforms. Make sure you subscribe. Click that bell because we have amazing, amazing content on the YouTube page, The House Chronicles. That's the YouTube name, The House Chronicles. Amazing content on there. Not just me, but other people in the house giving you amazing content about different type of stuff. Y'all should check it out. Subscribe. Leave a comment down below. We love to interact with y'all. Make sure you follow us, follow us on all social media platforms. I'm talking about X. I'm talking about Instagram, and we are on TikTok. We are TikTokers in the House Chronicles, but make sure you follow us. Also, follow me on my personal social platforms. It will be down in the description below. Oh, protocols observed. I'm talking to y'all today crazy, bruh. Because something crazy happened a couple days ago. So, I'm going to start it by saying this. I feel like in Nigeria today, we are so used to mediocrity that once something is mediocre, we say it's fine, it's okay, because, you know, the person is trying. And you see that in different aspects of our lives, in politics, in companies, private businesses, you see it in different aspects and it, and it trickles down to the person, the individual. As Nigerians, we are so used to mediocrity that once everything is mediocre, that is the, that is the, uh, that is the, is the average. Then when we're, when it's excellent, we're just blown away, you know, and then there's shit. But sometimes I feel like mediocre and shit, sometimes they're a little bit on the same level, but Depending on who's who. I'm just trying to have like a three system going. But you can understand what I'm trying to say. Oh, shout out to uh, the people that are listening to me in their cars. I know y'all be telling me, y'all be listening to me on Spotify. We are on Spotify too. And also on all other streaming platforms. Y'all should check it out. Follow us on Spotify as well. Saturday Brunch with Miracle OP. But back to what I was talking about. Uh, so I feel like we're so used to mediocrity that once we see something mediocre, we're like, it's okay. Uh, I'll accept it. It's not excellent, but it's okay. When we should actually say it's shit, it's not good enough. It's not up to standard, and I want something better. Ladies and gentlemen, something happened a couple days ago. A very popular food critic, blogger, content creator, Opeyemi, I'm a big fan of him. I, 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 I've told him that on his private uh, DMs. I've also asked him to come on the show severally. He said that he will, but his schedule is so tight. Hopefully he comes on the show after this because I would love to talk to him and, you know, pick his brain to see how he was feeling about this. But Opeyemi was in the East, Oweri to be exact, and uh, Imo State. And he stopped by uh, a fast food restaurant called uh what's the name of the restaurant called again donald's right donald's eh donald's let me help me check the name yeah so he went to a popular person's fast food restaurant and everybody knows this person he's a big personality big figure broke figures if they and literally he's a big figure uh and he went to the establishment and he recorded did his thing Huh? Donalds. Donalds. Okay, I got the name right. He went there, did his thing, did his normal recording. And mind you, by the way, Opemi, when I say I'm a fan, I'm a judi I'm a judicious fan. Like I watch his content. Like when he says places are good, I'm like, I want to try that place. 
There's this one Amala spot that he hit up in the mainland. I'm still looking for that place till today. Till to date. I'm still looking for that place. He looked amazing on camera. He said it was amazing. Apparently, there's no Begiri. And I'm like, yo, how can you have Amala with just a widow and, and stew? Like, I want to try that. It was really fascinating. So I'm a big fan of his. So like, if Opemi tells me something is good, I believe it's good because if something shit, Opemi's going to tell you that shit is shit. You know what I'm trying to say? In a funny way for content purposes, but there's a message behind it. You know, do better. So Opemi went to this person's establishment that he did this thing recorded. And mind you, on camera, the place was not looking that nice. I'm going to be honest. Maybe it was late at night. You know, maybe the food supply was low. They didn't, maybe they've already been sold out on some items already. It looked a little bit dry and empty. I'm not going to lie. And uh, the decor looked nice. You know, it looked comfortable. Sit, you can, you know, sit with your shorty or friend, you know, have a little meal. It looked, it looked okay. I know Pam, he started eating the food. I think he had a cake or a scone. <laughs> that bitch was as strong as a scone. <laughs> that shit was strong as a scone, I'll be honest with you. And he had like something pink inside. So I thought initially it was a sausage roll. Uh, then he had the burger, the burger. And that was a big controversial one. Um... And he gave his review, I thought, and I commented under his thing. I thought he held himself back. That was not the opinion me, I know, because even looking from eyes, the people always say some food is delicious from when you see it. Like food has to be attractive for you to eat. And from the eyes, it didn't just look that appetizing, you know? Maybe it was opinion me's camera, I don't know. <laughs> but it didn't look that nice. And Opemi was very nice with his feedback. Was like, your your staff microwaved the burger and fast food uh, snacks should not be microwaved for health reasons and also just for like texture, flavor, all that type of stuff. Gave his honest review. And initially, before he gave his review on the comment when the uh, famous person saw that he went, Opemi went there, he commented down below, oh, thank you so much for going, brother. Because like I said, Opemi is a big food blogger. He's huge. Everybody in Nigeria knows who Opemi is. I'm not trying to, I'm just giving him his roses. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not like sucking dick. Pause. I'm just giving him his roses. You know, he does his thing. He has amazing content. So a lot of people look at what he says. Then Opemi made his review and my guy got emotional. He got offended by the review. And he posted online, Opemi, apparently telling the staff to microwave the burger, actually. And that's what he was holding on to. Because let's say Opemi told your staff to microwave the burger. That's what you're really holding on to. His whole eloquent, soft, and I'm going to be honest, soft review of your restaurant that's the only thing you're going to hold on to? Ladies and gentlemen, I just I just keep giving Opemi's roses because this guy is a big food blogger. Like, he's huge. He's, I mean, I say Gordon Ramsay of, of Nigeria right now when it comes to critiquing food, eloquencies of, the, of, of dining uh, 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 etiquettes and all that type of stuff. He's kind of like Gordon Ramsay. So if he walks into your establishment... You better put on a good show because he's going to give you a review. And this is not just in Nigeria. There are big food review critics all over the world. This is an actual job that people have. And some people get a lot of money from it. That's how you have these five-star, four-star restaurants. Because food critics go there, judge the food, and give a review on it. And that's how you get your stars and all this type of stuff. I've forgotten the actual words. I was a big cooking fan. Watched the cooking shows and all that type of stuff. I used to know the names. I know some famous chefs as well. Because I'm very just fascinated about like random stuff. I'll be watching a documentary and I'm like, oh, who's this chef? And I just start watching documentaries about the chef. Huh? Chef stars? 
Yeah, Shilling Star. Yeah, they get like the Michelin. Yeah, Michelin Star. All that type of stuff. I think Gordon Ramsay has four. I'm not sure, but he has a lot. He's he's a boss. So like, there are actual critics that actually go and review restaurants to see the quality of your service and the quality of your food. So if one of them, a very popular one, is doing this for free because he gets paid for to do this, that should be a blessing, number one. You acknowledge the blessing good. He gave you his review, then you get emotional? Come on, my brother. If you guys don't know who I'm talking about now, by now I'm talking about Kobana Chief Priest. Kobana Chief Priest is a very energetic man, figuratively. He's a big personality, literally and figuratively. And I respect his hustle because he 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 comes from the uh, grass to grace story. You know, it's very very motivational. You know, he shows his wealth. He shows his. Uh, 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 flamboyant lifestyle a lot. I mean, his cash phrase is literally money now, water. Literally. So he's about that lifestyle. And there's one thing that food celebrities need to understand. When you enter any business, you're going to be heavily critiqued more than the people actually in that business. Why? Because you are a public figure. So your figure already gives you an advantage over people that have that would have started when you started. So they're definitely going to be more critical about your service, more critical about the quality of your food or the quality of your business, no matter what business you venture in. So you have to have good quality. The quality of your business needs to be the same quality of your public figureness. If your public figure is flamboyant, rich, clean lifestyle, wealthy lifestyle, if that's what you're showing on the socials, because I don't live with anybody, but that's what they're showing on the socials, your business, your food should have that celebrity, fancy, flamboyant, wealthy quality. It should measure up. That's all I'm saying. And that's why I told Opemi, I felt like you were a bit soft. Because if something is bad, and when other people have been bad, you were not this soft on them. Y'all should go check out his pages when something is shit, bro. Or when he's calling out somebody for doing something ridiculous. He's so animated. He, and I was, and I was, and I was trying to get that. Yeah, he may be rude. Yeah, he may be harsh. But there's a message behind it. If anybody's a fan of Gordon Ramsay, Gordon Ramsay will literally shout at grown ass people, chefs of pedigree, that your food is shit. You're making fucking stupid mistakes. You're done up. Like he makes you feel as little as possible. But there is a message to that, which is you need to do better. I know you can do better. That's why I'm pushing you this hard. And that's why I thought Opemi did a disservice not just to his fans, which is me, but to the people and also a little bit to his brand. Because like I said, Opemi says something is good. It's good. So imagine if a food critic with their, with their, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for with their, uh, What's the word? When somebody's word is strong with their, uh, help me out, guys. No, 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 no. With, 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 uh, when, a f like, like, imagine me going to a, a restaurant because a, a famous food critic has said and has given these people stars that this food is good, you know, all the type of stuff, good review. And I go there and it's a terrible review. And I go there and I get food poisoning. Maybe legally I may not attack you. I don't know the legal aspects of that. But your, 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 uh, your reputation, your reputation is going, to, is going to be diminished. Because you said this thing is good and it's not good. So I'm not going to believe you anymore. And it's a little bit lack of integrity. That's the word. 
Because I trust you and you betrayed my trust. Or unless your content is a lie. I don't think it's a lie. I'm a big fan and I know it's the truth. So that's why I told him I thought you were a little bit soft. Say it the way it is because you were not soft on other people. And people don't need to take this thing emotionally. It's business at the end of the day. You just opened. I don't know how long it was open, but I know he's doing a grand opening in, uh, in, 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 in Lagos here. Yeah. And he has David Doe and all these people coming. Yes, David Doe and these people coming to your place is very good, but you need to, they are not your main uh, 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 object. They're not your main market. You're looking for the masses. You're looking for the masses. You're entering the fat food industry. You should do research onto how Black Bell have been so successful. Do research onto how uh, Mega Chicken has been so successful. How the place has been so successful. How, may I say, Chicken Republic have been so successful. You do your market research because the fast food or food industry in general is a tough, tough business. And it's a business whereby you can lose more money than you gain. So if a, if a famous, professional, high-regarded food critic tells you so softly, may I say again, sorry or bear me, but I just have to say it, that you're, you need to improve on some things, you need to take it as constructive criticism and not take it to heart. Because if Gordon Ramsay enters your restaurant and you impress Gordon Ramsay and he just surprisingly enters your restaurant and he, he eats your food and impresses you and he says, oh my God, this place is good. Do you know how much money is about to come to you? That's the power of a PME. Because when he says something is good, the business of that place increases massively. Massively. Because people trust his word. So you want people like that in your establishment. So people that are coming at him and being like, oh, da, 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 da. anybody in the food business wants somebody like Opemi in your business so that you can impress him and he can tell his millions of followers that you are good and it increases your business value. That's, that's, that's what you need to do. That's business. You don't carry emotions into business, although it's hard, but you don't. Especially you being a public figure, chief. Especially you being a public figure. You need to match the quality of your restaurants and your food to the quality of you. Or less the quality of you is the quality of your food and restaurant. I don't believe it is because you show good stuff. You drink good drinks. You drive good cars. You wear good clothes. Let's eat good food. That's all I'm saying. Let's eat good food. Let's eat the food you would eat. Because I know you eat good. <laughs> you eat good. I want to eat good. You feel me? Like, I want to eat good. Not having something like Opemi come to your establishment and give you a review should motivate you. Then tell your staff to work harder and invite him back and impress him. Make it a whole big media thing. Oh my God, he said this and that the past. Now look what he's going to do. Impress him with like something good. And he gives you a good review. He increases your advantage. Now you're competing. Now you have the likes of people like Mega Chicken Black Belt. You're competing with them. Now you're a good competitor. Because the food business, you can be bankrupt very easily. A lot of people have gone in and gone out. Because it's very hard to be successful. It's very, very hard. The competition is fierce. There are new restaurants being open every day and there are also new restaurants closing every day too. It's a tough, tough business. And the whole microwave thing as well. Bro, there are food critics around the world, check this, that would deliberately plant a mistake for your waiter or, the, or somebody to, to make. They will plant it for them to make it and they will write against it. Because sometimes... That's when you need to have very good trained staff. And I know it's hard to get in Nigeria, but you also need to train your staff to have the quality of you as well because everything in that business represents you. Let me say again, your business is a representation of yourself. 
So your staff, your gate man, your gate, your key itself is a representation of you. Everything needs to be spotless. Everything needs to be in order like you would want them to give it to you. So that's when you tell your staff, sir, tell your staff to tell him, sir, we actually cannot microwave this because it will kill the ingredients of the burger and it will not be the same quality. If the person insists on down getting it microwave, then it's their bad. But sometimes we need to have bold, not when I say bold, it's not disrespectful, but bold people that work for you to maintain the quality of your business in a respectful manner so that people don't come in and kill your business and your staff also don't kill your business. So those things go hand in hand. I know these things are hard to get in Nigeria, but if you are a public figure, especially, and you're starting a business, please be expected to get these type of critiques. Be expected. Be very much expected. I know friends who are in the, in, 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 in the public figure lifestyle and also have food, food businesses. Some of them are good. Some of them are okay. But once again, my word for eating food does not matter. His word does. So you now kind of throwing shade and sending empty threats. It's childish. It's immature. And it also gives you a bad image as well of a goon that cannot be critiqued. You don't want that in business because it, it, it stops people from also doing business with you. It's not attractive. You know what I mean? And I know you're not that type of guy. You're just a big guy. Like, but that's how it seemed. That's how he took it. What did he say to you? He, 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 um, 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 like, he was, it kind of sounded like a threat, you know? He, just he was saying like, oh, like, I believe in karma. Karma will get you. You know, stuff like that. And, and, and you don't need to do that because it can be taken in any way. Even though you did not mean it that way, if another person saw it, they can take it as a threat. So you don't do that when it comes to business because the man at the end of the day was doing his job. And mind you, once again, he was doing his job for free. They pay him a lot of money to do reviews. A lot of money. I'm also kind of in the food business too, so I know how much some of these um, 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 food critics pay to review your food. So imagine paying a low level one compared to Opemi, and I know how much you pay that other guy. So imagine how much Opemi is collecting. It's a lot of money. So that means his word counts. So if he's doing it for free, the least you can do is take his critique or call him privately and be like, you know, what, where are some of the things that we can improve on? It takes a man to do that. It takes somebody that wants to upgrade their business, improve the quality of their business, want their business to be successful that does that. But like the Bible says, pride cometh before a fall. You got to remove pride from business. He said the business is being run by a six-year-old. Six year I felt that was a petty comment and I'm going to end it in a petty way. If you say the business is owned by a six-year-old, it looked like it was run by a six-year-old. Turn into the next one. <laughs>